Is knee pain ruining your training? Well, today we're going to put an end to it. Marco, chiropractor and owner of Oak for Bed Health. And I'll tell you, there's nothing worse than being like psyched up and motivated to work out for the day. And whether you're a running athlete or a weightlifter, and you've been looking forward to your, your training, your workout, and you start it and your knee starts to hurt. You know, you get into the squat rack and you, you get two, three, four reps into your workout and you start experiencing pain in the knee and it just ruins your workout. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about uh, knee pain affecting your workout and how we're going to fix it. Now, there's lots of types of different uh, uh, causes of knee pain, but what we're going to focus on today is inflammation in what's known as the quadricep tendon, which is located right above the kneecap. So quick anatomy, you know, you have four quadricep muscles. They're large, thick muscles. On the inside, we get the vastus medialis. On the outside, the vastus lateralis. Deep and scented is known as the vastus intermedius. And the larger of the four, which uh, is more superficial, is known as the rectus femoris. The rectus femoris is the only quadricep muscle that actually crosses both the knee joint and the hip joint. Uh, not too long ago, did a fascia release video on the rectus femoris, more uh, as to how it pertained to hip pain. I'll put the card up above me, you know, check it out sometime when you have, when you have a few minutes. Now, those four quadricep muscles all converge down and form what's called the quadricep tendon, and um, which is located, like I said, right above the kneecap. It then continues on, it, it, it becomes the patellar ligament, which it then attaches to the um, uh, front of the shin of the tibia. The main function of the quadriceps is to uh, extend the knee, except for, of course, the rectus femoris, which aids in hip flexion. So, why do we run into problems, um, for example, when it's time to squat and we start getting that pain? A lot of times it's right above the kneecap. Sometimes it can also affect the patellar ligament, so the pain can actually be below the kneecap. But, you know, we start working out and that pain starts develop, developing. Well, that means that the tendon, the quadricep tendon is inflamed. Why does the quadricep tendon get, get inflamed? It usually gets inflamed because the quadriceps themselves start tugging on the tendon. Now, normally, and I'm going to show you right here, normally, if this red band is my quadricep muscles and, and it runs down here, becomes the quadricep tendon, the patella ligament, normally that the quadricep muscles should be no different than this exercise band. When I squat down, these, these muscles should stretch. And when they're stretching, there's no tension on the quadricep tendon. So it should be just like this rubber band where when, when you squat or when you do anything involving the quadriceps, that band stretches. And when that band is stretching, the quadricep tendon is very, very happy. Okay. Over time, you know, wear and tear, uh, you know, little minor traumas, minor traumas, minor injuries. We're going we're gonna to lose elasticity to those quadricep muscles. We're going to build up what's known as fascial adhesions which are more fibrous in nature, they're not stretchy, and we're gonna start losing elasticity. And as I'm demonstrating in this band, um, by um, a common thing, you know, a lot of times fascial adhesions, people call them knots, because they feel like knots. And so if this band is now my quadricep muscles with these um, knots in here, these knots are not stretching. They're, they're very fibrous, they have no elasticity to them. So now, as I squat down with this quadricep, I'm not getting elasticity through the quadricep, and if I'm not getting any elasticity through the quadricep, the end result is that quadricep tendon is starting to get tension on it, starting to get uh, stress, it starts to get irritated, and over time, it's gonna get inflamed, and unfortunately, while, as long as those adhesions or those knots are uh, on, uh, in that quadricep muscle, and like I said, I don't care whether the, quad, the knots are on the whatever four quadricep muscles, maybe a combination of all four, but as long as there's fascial adhesions uh, in, or, or what we call knots in those muscles, it's going to continuously cause irritation to that tendon. And it's one of those types of problems, which is one of those injuries, which just doesn't seem like it wants to go away. You know, you, you try to stretch, you try to do some, um, some therapy on it, but 
um, the, the pain in the knee doesn't go away. And that's because until we get rid of those knots in here, this, that tendon is going to continue to get tugged on. So our goal today is we want to get rid of these adhesions in the quadricep muscle. I, uh, this is going to be a lot of fun, by the way, when I try to get this athletic tape off of the, the hair on, my, on, on, each, on each quad. I'm really looking forward to pulling this tape off after this video is over. Okay, so never mind my pain that I'm going to be experiencing shortly. What we're going to go over today, I'm going to go over some fascia release techniques for the quadricep muscles. And then I'm going to, after we do the fascia release technique, I'm going to show you one of my favorite quadricep stretches. This is how we're going to fix it. So that's, and these techniques are going to help us get rid of the quadricep tendon pain. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to do some fascia release work on the quadricep followed by some quadricep stretching. Now, if your quadricep tendon is super inflamed and it's really painful, don't do the stretch right now. Um, concentrate just on the fascia release work. And you'll notice as, as you do the fascia release work and the quadricep muscles become more elastic, there'll be less stress on the tendon and the pain will start to go down. It doesn't have to be pain free, free to do the stretches, but I wouldn't do the stretch if, if it's super inflamed. You're probably just gonna aggravate it. So I just wanna make mention of that, okay? So we're gonna start off with uh, the fascia release work on the quadricep. As we mentioned before, make sure you're warmed up. Get on the treadmill for 10 minutes, do some jumping jacks, get some blood flowing through the quadricep muscles. You'll get a much better release and you'll get less tenderness the next day if you warm up the tissue properly, okay? I'm just gonna use uh, two different soft tissue tools to do this. I have a, um, a Tai Chi Max Ball from Okra Med Health and I also have a regular size Tai Chi Ball from Okra Med Health. Now the reason we're using these is obviously because of the spiky texture, if you don't have a Tai Chi ball, try to follow along, use the knuckles of your hand. You can use a lacrosse ball, even though it's smooth. I mean, the purpose of these balls is because of the spikes. If you think of the muscle, of the fingers of, as muscle fibers, um, when you get these spiky balls in there, you get, look at the penetration. You get those spikes between the tissue, which is something you're not going to be able to achieve with something smooth like a lacrosse ball. So that's why um, we like these, these spiky balls when we do fascia release work because it can get in between muscle fibers, break up the fascia better, get deeper into the tissue. So like I said, if you don't have a, a, a Tai Chi ball, try you know work the lacrosse ball for now or use the knuckles of your fingers, okay? So the way that we're gonna get going on this is we're gonna first start off with the Tai Chi Max Ball. And we're just gonna do some general um, work throughout all four quadricep muscles by just getting in and doing some generalized um, digging around just with firm pressure on the uh, with you know putting firm pressure on the ball and I'm going to just go in all different directions I'm going to go side to side back and forth diagonal and I'm going to start from above the kneecap and I'm going to go all the way up the quadriceps as far as, far as I can go to, to just about where the hip is. I'm going to spend about 60 to 90 seconds just doing this type of work where I'm just getting, this is just almost like a, a part of my warm up. I'm getting the blood flowing. You're going to notice it's going to get pink. It's going to get a little red in here. And I'm just going to apply pressure and get the blood flowing throughout the quadriceps. Okay. Once I've done that, I'm going to break up the, the quads basically into three regions, kind of the inside, the middle, and the outside. And I'm going to start on the lower part of the inside, again with the ball, and I'm going to apply firm pressure, and I'm going to make all sorts of directions, up and down, side to side, diagonal, on that inside quadricep, and I'm going to slowly work my way up. And I'm going to spend, just on the inside now, I'm going to spend about 60 seconds. Now, as I'm coming up the quadricep on the inside, if I come across a knot, and you know, you'll know if you hit a knot, it's gonna be, it's gonna, it's probably gonna be a little sore. It, you, you, you can just feel it. It almost feels like there's something rubbery in there. Uh, if I, as I'm coming up on the inside, if I find something like that, I'm gonna spend an extra 30 seconds just mashing that knot up. I'm gonna go in all sorts of different directions right on that one spot. I'm gonna spend an extra 30 seconds on that knot, and then I'll come up and finish up the inside. After I've done that, I'm going to go in the middle of the quads, and again, I'm just going to slowly work my way up from the knee, from the knee all the way up to the hip. I'm going to spend about 60 seconds on the middle part of the quadricep in all different directions. Once again, I find a knot, 
I spend an extra 30 seconds pressing in as deep as I can, I can take it and in all sorts of different directions, but I'll spend an extra 30 seconds just on that knot. It can be a little uncomfortable um, when you find the knot, but just put as much pressure as you can, as you can comfortably, comfortably handle. And then finally, we're going to do the same process on the outside of the quads, 60 seconds all the way up. Unless you find the knot, you spend some extra time on each knot. It's going to be a little uncomfortable when you hit the knots. The area is going to, as you keep working, it's going to get red. It's it, it, it pinkish or reddish. It can leave marks when you do fascia release work. You know, this is fascia release work. This isn't picking daisies in the backyard. You know, this thing, it's not a real fun process, but it, it works. It's effective. It's just um, gauge your pressure. You know, if you've never done this before, don't stop pressing in as hard as you can, you know, go at a, a mild to moderate pressure and see how you feel the next day. If the next day comes around and you're not too sore, then you know on your next session, you can work uh, on it a little more and put a little more pressure. But don't, sometimes people will write in and say, oh, the Tai Chi ball, oh, it was so painful, I can't use it. It's because you're starting off with too much pressure. You, you've got to gauge your pressure if you've never done this. You know, if I've never lifted weights before, I wouldn't put 300 pounds on the squat rack and start trying to squat. You know, I would, you know, you get to build up. It's the same thing with fascia release work. You got to start off easier, start off lighter, and you build as you get used to it, okay? So that's how we're going to start with the, uh, the work on the quadricep with the Tai Chi Max Ball. After we've run through uh, all the, those, those techniques, now I'm going to add a little active motion. And what we're going to do is I'm going to extend the leg out. Now when the leg is extended, the quadricep muscles are in a little bit of a short, are in a shortened position because they're contracted. And I'm going to start, once again, we're going to break it up into three quadrants, the inside, the middle, and the outside. I'm going to start um, above the knee. I'm going to put the Tai Chi ball here. And on this technique, I like to use both hands if I can. I'm going to press down on the ball. And after I've pressed down on the ball, I'm going to pull the ball towards my body. So I'm gonna really do what I can to trap the tissue under this ball. And that's what's good about the spiky ball. When you press in uh, to trap the tissue, it really traps it well. It doesn't, the, but the tissue doesn't get loose once you're using a spiky ball. So I'm gonna push in and pull towards my body and trap that tissue. Once I have it trapped, in a nice slow controlled manner, I'm gonna elongate or lengthen the fibers of my quadricep by flexing my knee back just like that and I'm going to go back as far as I can I'm going to relax it I relax the tension on the ball I'm going to same spot I'm going to push down and pull towards me and again I'm going to bend the knee back and then I'm going to come up every time I come up I relax just for a second I push the ball back pull towards me and I'll do a third uh, release right on that spot so three three times um, for each spot. Then I'm going to come up, you know, about, a, about an inch or so, and I'm going to repeat the process. Same thing, pushing down, pulling towards me, and I'm going to repeat three times uh, for every spot. So I'll, I'll work up in, in one inch increments along the inside. Then I'm going to come to the middle. I'm going to repeat the whole process again. I'm going to push down, pull up, and then go through that process three times on that one spot. Now this feels really good. If you have tight quadriceps, you'll be amazed how doing these techniques, how you're just gonna feel this quadricep. You almost feel like the knots melting away. Like it feels so awesome to, to work on it. And so I'm gonna follow that up on the middle. And then finally, I'm gonna get on the outside and once again, follow those techniques. And every spot I hit, I'm, like I said, I'm gonna go three, three times on one spot before I come up an inch. Okay, once you've done that, this is where I'm going to use the smaller ball now to get in deeper. The smaller ball is um, is, is is spiky, and where it went to, because it's smaller, I can get deeper into the tissue. So if I had a particular knot or two, maybe two or three areas where I really could feel a deep knot in there, I'm going to get in at it with the smaller ball. I'm going to start the leg out straight like I just had it before, and I'm going to get that small Tai Chi ball. This is a regular size Tai Chi ball. I'm going to press in and I'm going to pull the tissue towards me. And I'm really going to get that, that, that ball in deep. And I'm going to repeat. I'm actually going to do five passes on this, on, on one spot where the knot is. So five times 
I'm gonna go push in, pull towards me, and then stretch those quadricep muscles as best I can. And once I've done that uh, knot, if like I said, if you have another knot here or another one here that you really felt was stood out while you were working on it, I want you to hit each one uh, with the regular ball and get in there and, um, and, and get a release on that, on that tissue um, with the smaller ball. You, know, you notice you're gonna get in deeper with this and it's gonna give you a good release. The, the, the reason we do that is the ball is being used to trap the adhesion and then once the adhesion's trapped, by elongating the fibers, by bringing the leg back, you actually kind of force that adhesion to basically pull apart. So it's an awesome way of getting those adhesions to break up. So that's, that's the techniques for fascia release. Uh, gauge your pressure, start with the larger ball, get in on the, the real tight adhesions or the real tight knots with the smaller ball. Once you've done that for a while, you feel that the tendon's calming down, you can move on to this. Now, I just want to take a second too to go over some techniques you can use on the quadriceps with the massage gun. And the reason being is I get uh, lots of emails and comments. People will, after we do a video using some fascia release uh, techniques, people will say, well, I have a massage gun. Can I use that? And you know what? Yeah, I mean, this is a great time to break out the massage gun. So I want to just take a few minutes just to show you how to use your massage gun properly when you're doing uh, it's fascia release work because it's a great tool. It's a great tool to have. And if you, uh, you know, have some um, fascia release like the Tai Chi balls, you can use that first and then get in there with the massage gun. Or if you just have a massage gun, it's a great way to break up adhesions. So anyways, this is the SRI 3.0 from Oakland Med Health. Uh, this thing is awesome. The battery life is one of the best batteries on the market. It holds a charge for 12 to 14 hours and up to 24 hours if you're using it at a low setting consistently. So it's a, it's a tremendous battery that comes with this. And there's, the other thing I like about the SRI 3.0 is it's got a pressure sensor. So if I start pressing in too hard, the uh, display lets me know that, okay? So the way I would go about using uh, a massage gun, and, and it depends on what you have for attachments. The SRI 3.0 comes with eight different attachments. Um, and so one of the attachments looks like this. It's like a U shape. And I like to use that to almost like get the tissue warmed up. So, uh, and, it, and it, it's a great way to kind of get some blood flowing into the tissue. Okay, and I'll take the U shape and I'll go right from the knee, right along the quadricep. So I really like this attachment because it, unlike, you know, most massage guns come with the conventional, just like a ball on the end, which is fine. I'm going to use that in a second, but I don't know of a better attachment to just get uh, like a massage going and to just get blood flowing into a muscle. So I love this attachment. It actually has some texture to it. So it actually uh, adds to the massage and I'm just going to go over it for about 60 seconds, just like that. Go right along the inside, come all the way up as far as you can towards the hip. There you go. Okay. After I've done that, I got the blood flowing in there. I'm going to move on to something more conventional, like a regular conventional massage gun ball um, to do some more direct work on, 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 on each quadrant. Once again, I'm gonna do it just like with the ball. I'm gonna start from the inside, I go to the middle and the outside, and I'm just going to come into the tissue. And I'm from the inside, I'm just gonna make strokes in different directions on the inside of the quadricep, and I'm gonna work my way up for about 60 seconds. And then I'm going to come into the inside of it, about 60 seconds, all different directions. Now, as I'm doing this, keep, keep in mind, you know, keep a uh, mental note of where you might have found a particular knot uh, that, that, that felt kind of tight in there. And if you come across that knot, I want you to just take the gun and just hold it on the knot. And actually, this I want you to hold it for about 60 seconds. I just want you to hold, you know, just light pressure and let that massage gun just kind of tap away at that knot. It almost like just melts the knot away. It's an awesome um, technique. It works awesome. And I go about 60 seconds. And then of course, do the outside. 
and I'll spend about 60 seconds on the outside. Unless I find a knot, then I'll spend an extra 60 seconds on that knot. Okay? And then finally, just like uh, we switched to the smaller ball when we found that um, we wanted to get in a little deeper, I'm going to switch off to like a smaller, harder attachment. Now, once again, just like with the balls, if you're not used to doing the deep work, maybe don't switch to the smaller attachment right away. Give it a little time first. But I'm going to switch to the smaller, almost looks like a bullet type of attachment. And I'm going to use that to get into the tissue uh, a little deeper. So say if I had a knot right about here, I'm going to get in there for about 60 seconds. I'm just going to kind of hold that SRI, the tip of it, right on the knot with a little smaller, harder attachment. And I'm going to go about 60 seconds on that knot. And that's all I'm doing, I'm just letting the mach machine do all the work. It's a very effective way of breaking up adhesions. You're, 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 when you, when you uh, hit the adhesion with that rapid fire action, it actually uh, has a big effect at breaking up that soft tissue adhesion. So just like that, and of course, if I have one or two others, I'll do the same exact thing. So, so like I said, if you have a massage gun, this is a great time to break it out. Get on those adhesions. It's a good complement to the massage balls. So if you don't have the massage balls, the gun alone will do a tremendous job at breaking up the fascial adhesion. Okay, so you've done the fascial release work. The tendon's actually feeling a little bit better. We're gonna move on to one of my favorite or my favorite quadriceps stretch. Now, uh, before we do, I should mention, you know, a while back I did a video on quadriceps stretches. It's a little more involved, a little more detailed. It shows a f uh, several quadriceps stretches. I'll put the card up above me. Check out that video. It, it, like I said, it, it, it has more stretches. But today I'm going to show you uh, just my favorite quadriceps stretch. All you need is a table or a chair. And you're going to take one leg's going to be out uh, front. I'm stretching my right quads and I'm going to hook my foot and ankle up on that, on that chair or table. I want to uh, think of two things as I do this stretch. One is I'm trying to sink as low as I can. And the other thing is I'm thinking of taking my buttocks and bringing it back towards my heel. So I'm gonna to try to think of doing both things at the same time. As I come down, I wanna have my foot uh, away, uh, far enough forward, where I don't want my knee going way, way over my ankle. So I wanna to try to have that shin perpendicular to the floor as I come down. And as I'm coming down, as I'm, as I'm stretching down, I'm going back towards the heel. And I'm just gonna hang in this position for 60 seconds as I just breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth, and as I take in my nice, uh, slow, deep breaths, I'm gonna just continue to try to go down deeper and back further. So I'm just gonna take my time, 60 seconds, just you'll feel this all the way from the quad tendon, all the way through the quads, right uh, up to the, uh, that rectus femoris where it crosses the hip. It's just an excellent, excellent stretch. I love this stretch. 60 seconds, I'll come up, I'll do it actually three times um, uh, on my right side. And even if that's the side that's giving me the trouble, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna work the left side also. The same goes with the fascia release work. Work both sides, uh, not just the side that's symptomatic. Work both sides to make sure that you're breaking up adhesions uh, in case they're exi they exist on the opposite side, okay? All right, so there you have it. Start working those techniques. I recommend working them every other day so that you work on it, you break up those adhesions, the next day, you give the tissue some time to heal and repair, and then you work on it the following day. So every other day, I would work those techniques. If you're really, really sore from doing it, then sometimes you have to take two days off in between. But every other day. The other important aspect to getting this knee pain to go away is you have to uh, temporarily avoid the exercises that aggravate it. So if that uh, quadricep tendon is really burning and flaming up when I squat, um, I may need to take a few days or a couple weeks off from, from performing that activity until this thing heals. You know, I'd rather miss a week of squatting than a month of squatting because this thing doesn't go away. So two things, work the techniques, but you have to also avoid, on these type of injuries, you have to avoid these, the activities that aggravate. Because if you keep doing those activities, these type of injuries can go on for months and months and months, and it is just, it's, it's just awful. So, 
do what you, you know, be proactive, do what you have to do to get this thing uh, and get rid of it as fast as you can, okay? Hey, listen, I appreciate everyone who comes by my website, www.okermanhealth.com. They visit our stores. We have Tai Chi balls. We have the SRI 3.0 massage gun. Uh, there's video consults available with myself for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, all sorts of different things at the store. I appreciate when you come by because it helps me keep this channel going. So I really appreciate it, all right? Hey, listen, if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe to my channel, Okermed Health, on YouTube questions about exercises or injuries, just leave a comment in the comment section below. I do everything I can to get back to everybody. And don't forget, Oakland Health is here to keep you fit forever.